So people, welcome. My name is Radu, I'm a street photographer from Romania. This is a thousand words. This is a lovely bottle of sweaty, misty, hazy derange. Romanian made IPA. Very flavorful, beautiful taste, quite bitter, very citrusy, excellent. Fantastic beer for a very warm late March afternoon. And this is the Sony A7 A7R3, pardon my French, with the Konica Exanon 40 millimeter F1.8. And today we're talking about how I uh, sold everything Fuji, ditched all my Fuji gear and went back to Sony. Yeah, it's going to be a juicy one, stick around. So, um, as hinted before, this is a video where I eat my own words. This is a video about changed minds, about uh, the perils of switching your entire system. The trouble, by the way, this spells trouble. <laughs> Derange quite literally means trouble. So yeah, quite a fitting name. And yeah, we're talking about the troubles of leaving uh, the tried and tested, the proven and familiar, or, or giving in to temptation, let's call it, because that's what happened. Um, I grew a little bored, I can say that, uh, with Sony, and back in uh, late July of 2023, I made that video where I said I am saying bye-bye to Sony and grabbing the Fujifilm crop sensor system with both hands and running with it. And I would still be there if it were not for some uh, very unfortunate circumstances, which uh, is to say that uh, three cameras broke on me and uh, I'm simply done with Fujifilm's shitty quality control. Now, this video is not to shit on Fuji because uh, they do have a lot of great things going for them. Uh, they have beautiful bodies, excellently designed, pretty, ergonomic cameras. Images are beautiful. Uh, it, it's, a, it's simply a joy to shoot with those cameras until they stop working. Now, uh, this is not to say any of uh, the three bodies that broke on me fatally broke. They didn't uh, stop working altogether. They just developed little, little flaws that made them just a pain in the ass to use, frankly. Uh, you know the saying, the straw that broke the camel's back or death by a thousand paper cuts. Uh, it's, it's quite fitting because um, while none of them actually stopped working on me, all of them still could make pictures, they were such a pain in the ass to use and a, a, a royal killjoy. So yeah, let me just uh, quickly tell you what happened. Then um, I'm going to address a few points I made in uh, the video I mentioned, the Bye Bye Fujifilm video, and uh, talk about some conclusions and uh, lessons that I've, I've learned uh, during this time. Firstly, I uh, owned an XT2 XT2s and an XT3. And uh, if you're not considering the XH, and uh, sure enough, even before the XH was a thing, the XTs were the flagships of Fuji, so it's not it's not like I went into the uh, more mediocre side of the Fuji lineup. I went for the flagships. The first X-T2 that I got uh, eventually started developing a real mushy shutter button where 
the first stage of the shutter where it would acquire autofocus simply vanished. So uh, it no longer made the distinctive two stages before triggering. So um, it, 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 it just meant a really shitty experience. I made a video about that because it was uh, still in warranty from MPB and I sent it to them. They uh, claimed nothing was wrong with it, sent it back. Uh, yeah, go watch that video if you want. Uh, but uh, that camera is still with us. Uh, my wife uses it and uh, she says she can live with it. I'm a bit more of a stickler. I, uh, while I don't uh, necessarily expect my gear to be pristine as far as aesthetic goes, I do expect them to be fully 100% working. So uh, it was not the case. Uh, that mushy button really drove me nuts. It grinded my gears in ways that I, it, it's unreal. So I couldn't, simply I couldn't use it anymore. I then had another X-T2, which developed a, a different issue, but still with the shutter button. It uh, eventually became kind of sticky and it felt like it grabbed on something on the side, like it, it was mechanically stopped in its operation by something inside the shutter button. Uh, it uh, was then followed by an X-T3, which I bought locally in fantastic condition. Really, really seemed like it, it, it was unused almost, uh, working great. I, I love that camera. I, I would still be using it if uh, it didn't uh, develop yet another issue with the shutter button. This time, the X-T3, uh, the issue was a little more serious in the way that, uh, again, it didn't completely fail. It was nothing fatal, like anything of the sort, but uh, you know how Usually when you grab a camera and turn the button from the off to the on position, you would be right in expecting the damn camera to turn on. Well, my X-T3 didn't. I had to press the shutter, after switching it on, I had to press the shutter button quite a few times, sometimes even five, six, seven times before it actually turned on. Uh, it did the same while waking from sleep, so, uh, I should mention the way I shoot is when I'm out shooting, I never turn the camera off. I just leave it to go into standby, set a really short standby time so as to conserve battery. And when I want to take a photo of something, uh, while raising it to my eye, I have pressed the shutter button a couple of times so uh, I know it's woken up and ready to shoot. Now, my X-T3, when I put it to my eye to take a picture, I was met with a uh, black screen, a black viewfinder, a sound asleep camera. So that meant that I had to massage the crap out of the shutter button until it would eventually decide to wake up. That would also mean my subject already spotted me because I was stood there like an ass fiddling with my camera instead of just taking the shot and moving along. That also meant my subject was now on guard the candidness of the moment was gone. It made me miss a lot of shots. And it's when I um, decided to ditch my entire Fuji lineup. Because you see, in Romania, we don't have a, an official Fuji film authorized service facility. But there is a store in Bucharest that uh, handles Fuji film gear, and they're quite knowledgeable, so I gave them a call and uh, when I started explaining my issue, they didn't even let me finish. They interrupted me halfway and told me uh, that this is a very usual and known issue of the entire XT lineup, uh, that this happens a lot with a lot of bodies, and uh, it's, they called it their illness. It's something very common. So uh, I was quoted anything between 100 to several hundred euros as, as far as repair price goes, depending on the complexity of the issue, if uh, the something inside could uh, still be salvageable or it required uh, outsourcing uh, a new piece 
all together. So uh, I just, I, it, it was there and then that I decided, no, thank you, thank you. What use is it to me, a, a beautiful camera that takes beautiful images but doesn't start? Thank you, but no. I'm going to just say to hell with it. So I sent all my Fuji kit to MPB, sold it for a pretty penny. About 200 euros less than I would have gotten for it were I to send it, to sell it here piece by piece. But um, the thing is, um, firstly, I didn't want to sell it to an actual person or a photographer before repairing it because um, I didn't want to scam anybody into buying something that's not working right. Yet again, I need to stress, it still took pictures, just not <laughs> when I wanted it. it. It just took pictures when it wanted. So I said, I'm going to try one of two things. First was send the entire kit to MPB and uh, if they buy everything, I'll just be buying into Sony again. If not, uh, I would uh, still just sell them the lenses, which would have allowed me in, to buy the A7R2. Uh, that also meant uh, they would be sending my X-T3 back. I would also be repairing it out of pocket and uh, selling it here on the used market. Because now you could be thinking if conscious or uh, guilt stops me from selling it to another person, why not um, do the same with MPB? And a person is one thing, a huge ass corporation with offices in three continents is another thing. I think they can, they can, and they have professional guys that check the gear. If they check it and deem it okay enough to give me money for it, who am I to contradict, who am I to say otherwise, so yeah. That's the gist of it, in short. Uh, so I'm now back <laughs> shooting Sony and vintage lenses. On the subject of vintage lenses, I want to address a few points I made in my um, Bye Bye Sony video, where I claimed, on the one hand, that um, I was going to stop shooting vintage lenses and doing reviews altogether. And by the way, I'm going to start doing reviews again. Yeah, this is going to be all over the place, but uh, it is what it is. So, what changed? Why go back to vintage lenses when I claimed that they made me distracted, that I should be sticking with one lens and uh, learning the ins and, out, ins and outs of that particular item and not be all over the place, distracted by all kinds of different lenses. Why make reviews again? Well, the short answer is because the most fun I've ever had, by far, in photography is when I shot vintage lenses on a full-frame camera. It, it, it's what has given me the most amount of joy, the images I love most, uh, my most cherished moments, and uh, it's also where I think I've learned a lot, because I started using vintage manual glass uh, quite a few years ago, and it's how I understood optics, it's how, uh, how I understood how light behaves and how it makes images. Uh, the very physics and optics of things, what's an aperture, how it affects the depth of field, how it affects actual sharpness, and all the characteristics of the image, uh, chromatic aberrations, all that thing was so much easier for me to learn and understand while using manual lenses, because it, it was all very tactile, it was all at my little fingertips. So, long story short, short answer is because I enjoy it. And I think it's, uh, you know, I, I struggled a lot with uh, trying to get better at things. And while I still do, I still want to make better and better photos, I still want to be a better photographer, I think 
it's a lot harder to achieve that if you're taking the hard way, if uh, you're not enjoying the process. Enjoying the process and doing it like enjoying it, I think it, it, it facilitates a faster, more efficient learning process. So that's on the one side. On the other hand, I do need to work on my uh, discipline. I do need to work on my ability to focus. So I just have to get better at focusing and not be all over the place and uh, keep myself from getting distracted. On the subject of reviews, the answer is pretty much the same. I just enjoy testing out a lot of new lenses. I love finding what is a lot of times basically trash fodder and uh, having them sent off to be CLA then getting back a beautiful working piece of glass. I also like to think a lot about the history of these pieces of glass because a lot of them are 50 years old or 40 years old or 30 years old or old. So sometimes I wonder the things these lenses have seen, the people that have used them in the past. And I think it's important in a way. It, it adds, I wouldn't say it adds necessarily personality to them, but I like to think about things like this and they, they matter. And um, it's something, it's not nothing. It's not a little thing. One other point I made was the fact that uh, using manual lenses made for a lot of missed shots and uh, how I didn't even try and take the shot because um, yeah, you, you can never be faster than a good autofocus system. So um, the thing with that is yet again I have to get good, get better at focusing manually, do better and why not? Although I do enjoy shooting wide open, I'm, and I never claimed otherwise, I'm quite a bokeh whore, so I basically shoot all my lenses wide open just for the sake of it. Um, when the situation calls for it, just put the camera to F8 and be there. Use zone focusing. The Grace did it, why not me? So um, it, there's really nothing from stopping. I think I did a lot of mental gymnastics and justification for the fact that uh, I admittedly felt a little bored with Sony and I, I felt like um, their cameras lacked character and they were really utilitarian and uh, I wanted something to inspire me and spark that uh, something. And I looked in all the wrong places because what I learned ever since is that it's not necessarily that a new, beautiful camera inspires you. It's, well, it can do that, but I think it's uh, way better when um, an old, familiar camera that gets out of your way is much better in a way that it allows you to, to get to your pictures better, easier, faster, because you see, the way I understand it, you should strive for a camera to become almost like an extension of your physical being, something that intermediates the image taking process in a way that it, you almost don't even feel like it's there. So uh, a, a good camera that you know and are familiar with is better than a new camera that is prettier. And I'll give you that still. That. Fujifilm cameras are somewhat prettier than the Sony. But uh, I think this is really, really pretty as well, because out of all modern, let me focus, out of all modern mirrorless lenses, uh, there's not even a contest. Uh, Canon cameras are really, they seem like toys. Their design is just basically a joke if you ask me. I also think they have a really shitty attitude towards third-party lens manufacturers, so out of principle I wouldn't be caught dead using them. Then it's Nikon, and uh, I did briefly consider Nikon. Uh, they have 
very good cameras, but uh, not so many options as far as lenses goes. They're still somewhat new, certainly way newer than Sony is in the mirrorless game. Um, the Panasonic S5s are a bit too video-centric for me to justify their cost because I would end up paying a lot for uh, features I wouldn't be using. Sorry. I'm very much a stills guy, so I don't need 90% of uh, the video features. So yeah, it was uh, between that and my familiarity with Sony cameras, it was a no-brainer. It, it, it was uh, like really a choice that was quite easy to make. What else? What else? What else? This beer is fantastic, man. Really great beer. Lessons learned, yeah. Um, well, I will be focusing yet again on vintage lenses. I will not go the exclusive route this time because, uh, at least for now, uh, I'm working on a project. It's going to be a long-term project. Hopefully not years long, but uh, certainly months long. So it's there where I need a really fast, precise, accurate autofocus. So uh, it's also going to be required that it's a wide angle. And um, that's why I bought the Sony 24F 2.8G. And that lens is crazy fast and accurate, coupled with the Sony. It's something that practically never fails. I also plan to buy the 40f 2.5, the G lens, so I won't be exclusively shooting vintage manual glass, but mostly. I plan to do a few revisits of old favorites. The Hexanon sure is going to be one of the first revisits. It's uh, very dear to my heart. This lens is quite uh, personally important. Uh, it, went with me in my honeymoon. It shot uh, quite a lot of beautiful images there, so uh, it means a lot personally to me. Uh, I also want to try a different version of the Helios 44 too, because uh, my wife has another copy, which is supposed to be way better than the Valdai, which I reviewed on the channel. So yeah, that's uh, as far as plans go, lessons learned. Um, it's um, it's important to do what you enjoy, not uh, at the expense of uh, your growth, but certainly because your growth comes easier. I truly believe that. Uh, there's no medals for doing things the hard way. There's no medals. Nobody's going to build statues for you because you use uh, something you don't enjoy. So I think it's really important that uh, you, you find what you love and uh, I think that about wraps it up. It's not really a video I necessarily wanted to make, but I felt like uh, I needed to because I did the other one, the Bye Bye Sony, and um, I, it would have been remiss of me not to at least in passing, mention the reasons behind my decision to go back on my word uh, or go back and uh, change my mind because I did fully intend to stick with Fuji and I would have were it not to break. And um, it, it, it's not something that I could easily live with because you could say, should have just sent that in to get it fixed and use it again. But the thing is, uh, I lost all faith in it. As far as their quality control and their build, uh, I feel like they're iffy, they're capricious, and uh, certainly having three bodies go sour on you 
in a short span of what, eight or nine months, is, it, it really does a number of, on your faith in the system and the brand. Personally, I don't think I will ever own a Fujifilm camera. So, um, yeah, it's not, again, it's not meant to be a hate party, boo Fuji, because I did love them. It, it was the single brand that could have kept me away from full frame. Other than that, there's really no, there's really no other option as far as I'm concerned for sticking with crop sensors. And um, it, there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, full frame look, certainly novels to be said about the vintage look, the elegance, the softness, the imperfections that tell a story like, it, it is much more, much more suitable for uh, the way I want my images to look in the first place. Because even back when I uh, had no intention of ever dropping Fuji, I still longed for that, that classic softness. So I tried to emulate it with uh, film recipes and um, various glass. And the 35 f1.4 from Fuji really came really close. It, it, it was a great lens and came very close to being almost all that I wanted in as far as lenses goes. But uh, lenses like the 23 F2 are really, I'm speaking of the Fuji here, they're really boring, really meh, really s digitally sharp and flat and clinical. If the 56 1.2 is yet again one of the better lenses, the R version. It's the one I owned and it was pretty nice, pretty nice. But um, there's nothing quite like the look of a vintage lens on a full frame sensor. So I'm going to be leaving things here. Uh, to all three of you that are still watching, thank you. Thank you. Until next time, I bid you farewell. This has been a thousand words. I have been Radu. This is Derange, and I'm probably going to have another, then go off walking, possibly take a few pictures. Bye.